inventors of the transistor and the integrated circuit, producers of the first electronic digital watch, inventors of the LCD, Gillette made digital watches? Join me as we explore the world of US digital watches. Of course, we have to start with the aforementioned first commercially available electronic digital watch, which was brought to market under the brand name Pulsar, obviously integrated into Hamilton. After some initial exposure to the media in 1970 using the 44IC model made by Electrodata and the launch of the P1 in 1972 with the first 450 being 18 karat gold, the P2 astronaut model was worn by James Bond in Live and Let Die with the P3 representing the largest volume of production. Fancier technologies would follow with the wrist flick auto command series with the P4 in 74, with the Pulsar time calculator in 75, and LCD and Pulse Time Pulsar being launched in 77, before the LED market rapidly ran out of steam around that time. Some interesting side stories to the Pulsar one are George Thies, fired from Electrodata that produced the first prototypes of Pulsar, where he was a founder who established the brand Chronex that also made LED watches, as well as the use of the same module by Wittenauer within the Polara LED watch. Latronix, who was also a supplier, made some of their own watches, and Hewlett Packard, who was an LED supplier, also had their own venture with the very sought after by collectors, HP01. Now Fairchild's Semiconductor was established in 1957 by Gordon Moore, the Moore's Law Guy, and Robert Noyce after leaving Shockley Labs where the transistor had been invented. In 1959, Noyce invented the integrated circuit at pretty much the same time as Jack Kilby at Texas Instruments, who we'll come back to. They would move into the LED space in the 70s and be one of the main suppliers of this technology. Their LED modules were used by Elgin. They actually launched the American Minicom in 1973, also working with Uranus, who did some cool stuff of their own actually, including this awesome solar calculator watch Croton used their technology in the 1973 Croton Terrestrial Quartz. And from around 1975, they would also start doing LCDs with the brand name Exatron also being used with a solar version in 1978. Hughes Aircraft is an interesting organization founded by Howard Hughes of the film Aviator fame and originally intended as a home for the building of the H1 Racer built in 1935 which set a world airspeed record at the time. The company would go on to do a lot of military and defense work with things such as laser aircraft computer systems, which I suppose made the LED watches an avenue that came off that sort of technology. They did also do a few modules themselves for employees, for example, this calculator watch that was worn by actors in Battlestar Galactica, but their work got everywhere, even though they were only operating until 1978, which was not long after the death of founder Howard Hughes. Hughes were involved and developed the very cool Gemini 2 in 1975, working with Longines, with Wittenauer also launching the Polara with a Hughes module. The Compicron calculator watch is a cool one, and this Benris pop-up is a very nice, unique watch, which I think was a Hughes module if it wasn't Texas Instruments, with the Vintage Watch Channel recently doing a very nice fix of that particular watch. On screen, you'll see a whole bunch of other brands that utilize Hughes, LED, and indeed LCD watches. Another very interesting company within the US digital watch space is Microma, which was a subdivision of Intel, which was founded by some of the characters we mentioned before. So uh, Moore and Noyce, who left Fairchild and established Intel in 1968, with the company Microma being started in 1972 with the launch of the Microma 360 at Emporium department stores. A second LCD module was launched in 1974, was famously worn by Deckard in Blade Runner, the best film of all time, and Microma was closed and sold to a Swiss brand in Jura that would rebrand it as Microma Swiss. The next key company we'll talk about is Optel, founded in 1969 by RCA Labs to focus on LCD displays. They would actually get a lot of investment from the Swiss, which is why a lot of their models of the early dynamic scattering LCD display were used in Swiss brands rather than that many US brands. Instances of their modules being used within the US context were the 1972 Waltham Walcron, the 1972 Optcom 1 by Jules Jurgensen, and the Hamilton Laser shown at Basel Fair, but wasn't produced, are other examples. 
Their shift to twisted pneumatic LCDs was around 1972, I believe. They would also be used by West Clocks and Seth Thomas Quartzmatic, which was sold by General Time Corp with other offerings in 1973 being LED H1 and a cool mini calculator watch shown at Basel Fair under the Euro Time brand in 1975. Another company we've mentioned previously was of course Texas Instruments, founded in 1941. Pioneers of the first transistor radio in 1954 and of course home of Jack Kilby, one of the pioneers behind the integrated circuit in 1958. They collaborated with Longines and ESA to bring the cool Clepsydra to market around 1972, with the Model 100 being launched under the Wells brand in 1973. In 1974 we would see the 101, 102, 103 and 104 modules, with 1975 having the 500, 600 and 700 LED modules. 76 would see a larger variety of watches with 7 models using the 401 and 402 calibers and 16 models using the 501 and 502 calibers. Their LCD range would largely be sourced by the South Korean Han Dok organization with an alarm chrono version also available in 1978. A very cool looking watch is the pseudo analog Starburst watch shown at Basel Fair in 1979. Of course, their watch division was pretty savagely shut down in 1983, with them being one of the last US manufacturers to move out the business, with international competition being too strong to make the sector profitable. Of course, one US-centric organisation, or is it really Norwegian, that did stay in business was Timex, which I won't really go into too much here as I've done a whole in-depth video on their history in the digital watch game. Of course, the vast majority of its watches are made in the Philippines these days, but at the start they did make some SSQ models using the previously mentioned Hughes technology. And of course the triathlon would keep them in the game launching in 1984, whilst they went on some adventures with Sinclair, with Indiglo and the Ironman triathlon putting them more on par with Casio, who would be the dominant force in the US digital watch market. Another US electronics firm was of course Commodore. Although actually originally established in Canada in 1954, before moving to King of Prussia in the US in the 70s, their LED watches in 76 were sourced by South Korea and they were apparently a big driver down of the price of LCD watches in 1978, which were apparently sold in blister packs with 15 different watches. Different from Fairchild Semiconductor, although actually eventually buying it in 1987 before spinning it back out again in 1997, was National Semiconductor, founded in Connecticut in 1959 and moving to Santa Clara in 67, with their first LED module coming out in 1973. Their Novus brand LED watches were made in Malaysia. Their XLR brand was lower priced, with the WM08 being an example in 1974, 1975, would be their first twisted pneumatic LCD brand, with a chrono version of coming in 77. They did a calculator watch at Basel Fair called the Microcomputer or Chronomat, which was a scientific calculator in 1978. One of the absolute coolest series of watches is from Real Electronics under the banner of Ragen Semiconductors, which is the Synchronar 2100 watch, the earliest LED watch with solar cells and an awesome perpetual calendar, that is one that includes leap years, that went until the year 2100. Mark 1 would be in 73, with Mark 2 in 75, Mark III in 1977 and Mark IV in 1981. There would apparently be a 2002 recreation of the Mark IV version and apparently Roger Real was still working on Mark V up until when he passed away in 2005. These are very cool watches and a nice piece of US digital chronology. One of the bigger US brands today is Arbitron and they have indeed always had a big choice of LED watches with the technology being supplied by a hand dock and electronics with the Quantum brand being a related one. Bulliver was obviously a pioneer in electronic watches with the Accutron Space View. But they also had this big block model known as the AccuQuartz, as well as the Computron and interesting Combitron model. Now for the fun bit, the weird and wonderful things from the US market. Suncrux were early innovators of the pseudo-analog watch with the Lacroix, amongst a few other things like the DM401 and DM600. Data Time were amongst the first game watches with the Monte Carlo game watch. And here are a few remaining watches for your viewing pleasure to show the diversity of watches that were around in the 70s. And that's it for today's video. I hope you've learned a few things and enjoyed it. More to come and do like and subscribe. Have a great rest of your day.